the only time that people ever seen me was either a viewer of mine or a viewer of people I'm friends with. So I'm put on like a, a nice light kind of thing of like, oh, this is my friend. Like, you should like my friend. Whereas MCC was the first time where like, I'm kind of getting criticized by every area of like the Minecraft sphere and people don't have a reason to know who I am or like have a thing. So they'll just be like, oh, well, my good creator didn't enjoy this. So I don't enjoy you kind of thing. And that was a lot of like learning to deal with kind of thing. Welcome back to the show. There's no telling where we'll go. So come and share a laugh on the Imp and Skiz podcast. All right. So today we are joined by the one, the only Scott Major. How you doing, Scott? Hi. <laughs> thank you for having me. I'm excited to finally be here. <laughs> Remotely, of course, because uh, you do sadly. live a little far away from us. Just but, a little. But uh, <laughs> thankfully, just we a have short. It. Like, what would it be like? Twelve hour flight or something? It's yeah. Like... Well, I don't know. You tell me. You just took it. Uh, we saw each other at TwitchCon yep. in what yeah, October. Vegas. So yeah, you that was about that. 11, 12 hour flight. So yeah, there you go. There you go. It doesn't happen enough, but uh, it was nice to meet you in person. So uh, before we dive in uh, much further, I'm going to assume that none of our viewers and listeners have a clue who you are and let you just tell the world uh, who you are, what you're about and what you do as a content creator, if you would. Yeah, of course. Um, so I'm Scott or Scott's Major, or dang, that's a long name. <laughs> um, I've had to also labeled as a branding nightmare, is what I tend to go by. Um, <laughs> but I've been doing... It honestly is one of those things that like, I used to hate the fact that my YouTube name was different from everything else, but after like the last couple of years, I've like learned to appreciate that separation, yeah, like yeah, having yeah. that kind of divide. So it's been quite nice. But I've been doing content stuff for like 10 years now. Um just doing mostly Minecraft, but I've also dipped my toes into Among Us, um, Sims, and just a bunch of other different types of games. Um, mostly YouTube and then streaming was sort of... I keep thinking I started streaming like two years ago and then I have people resub with like 56 months and I'm like, never mind, <laughs> it's been longer than yeah. two years actually. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> so, flies. so 10 years, uh, did you start with Minecraft or did you start making videos with a different game? I sort of... So like I started trying to do youtube years and years and years ago and it was actually my sister who introduced me to like the world of content creators like and people doing that because to me youtube used to just be like cat videos and music videos like that was it <laughs> and i remember my sister introducing me to probably enough people i ended up becoming like really good friends with um my friends joy Griffith and uh, strawberry 17 at the time and she was like oh my god there's these people that do vlogs i was like that's stupid why would anyone want to watch someone <laughs> vlog what they're doing like what <laughs> and then like i discovered like minecraft stuff and gaming stuff and i was like oh well this is more what i'm into and i was like i talk a lot anyway so surely i can just click a record and see what happens <laughs> and i would try i'd make a channel do a few videos get bored because it wasn't going anywhere give up for like six months and then start again but by that point i'd forget what the email and password I used was so I just start again <laughs> and I did that like three times so there's like three different channels or two different channels out there that like no one knows because they're like random usernames but they just have old videos that I can't ever get rid oh, of no. Scott people are going to be digging now you know how the internet yeah is. people yeah, will find them They'll yeah. find it. Um, I don't even think I don't think I even sound like myself at this point um but yeah I've been doing it for that long um and it's been fun just kind of like exploring and evolving with my content and like as I've got older I've kind of changed the way I film and the way I act and it's sort of my audience has grown up with me as well so uh, did you did you do any sort of theater as a kid you, uh, you seem to be very comfortable and natural in front of a camera and the and the voice has got a lot of energy behind it did you do stuff as a kid that led you to believe that you wanted to be in some sort of form of entertainment um, I think for me, like, I used to always love doing, like, I would go to, like, different drama clubs and things. Like, I, I the most I'd say I was involved was, like, I once played Chip, the little teacup from Beauty and the Beast in a high school production oh. of Beauty and the Beast. Um, and they, I was, like, 13 and hit notes that most of the girls couldn't hit. My voice had not broken then. Um, and I also was part of, like, a, I used to go to, like, a church kind of drama thing where we used to put on, like, shows and pantomimes and plays and all that, but they were always like the ones with like religious underlinings kind of thing like it was always like and that's why jesus loves everyone at the end like <laughs> heading into those messages kind of thing but um i've always quite enjoyed it. i'm a very like uh people pleasery type person where like getting 
reactions out of people like where they're laughing or happy like that sort of stuff is what's always fueled me kind of thing so mm. it sort of wasn't i ever thought i'd be in like a public space per se like doing this type of thing it, but it was always something that like my mom and my teachers used to say like they could see me doing something involving other people because i'm very personable when i chat kind of thing um but yeah i sort of just this started as a hobby and then i was fortunate enough that it turned into a career yeah, you know, I, was no, ask, ahead, I was gonna ask that if if this was something that you were doing full time or, or if you're juggling, um, and you just answered that. So was there was there a time in between uh, where you were oh. doing videos, but you were still having to like work another job and and balance that out? Yeah, I used to. There was one point in my life where like I had a few different retail jobs, like just part time while I was at uni, and I remember there was one point where like I was working like sixteen to thirty hours a week. I was also at university full time, and this was back in the day when YouTube you'd upload daily. So I was like uploading videos daily, working and doing university. And I like look back and I'm like, where did I find the time? Yeah. Like, where where were those extra hours that have now ran away from me? Like, I don't know where they went. <laughs> yeah, need less sleep back back in those days. Yeah, or I don't yeah. Know. We got more <laughs> energy when we. I were feel younger. the same way. Like when I was working full time, I would have to stay up. You know, after. I get the kids to bed and uh, and then work till like 3 a.m. on videos. Yep. And then I would be like, I'd hit upload at like 3 a.m. and get a couple hours of sleep and wake up and and publish it, you know, and, and then go to work, you know, like the, it's 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 not as easy when you're getting started, obviously, yeah. right, to have to juggle, especially if if you got you know things to take care of like pets or family or anything like that. Like it can be really overwhelming. Yeah. It's the type of thing I always say, like, whenever I get asked, like, if people, like, oh, they want to be YouTubers, because my sister's a primary school teacher, and I've, like, gone into the school and, like, spoke to the kids and for, like, career week and all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. I always say where I'm, like, make sure you have, like, a backup. Like, it's, I said, I did it as a, just a hobby. I did it because I enjoyed it. And then I was also at university for 3D computer animation, because that was, like, what I was going to pivot into. Mm. And then it kind of, in, like, the last year of uni, it was, like, it was taking more opportunities than it was giving because content creation was giving me like events and like promotion things to go to and all this sort of stuff. And I remember kind of being like, I think I want to leave uni like a year early and just like graduate with just my bachelor's degree, not with honors. Um, and all my university lectures were like, yeah, we agree. You should do that. <laughs> like, they were like, yeah, this makes sense. On you go. <laughs> Did you have any family members that you had to break that news to that was like, what are you doing? <laughs> Yeah, I remember, like, my mum, like, I remember being really worried because, like, my mum didn't even want me going to uni to do 3D computer animation. Um, I think it was, like, I was always grew up with, like, slightly older parents and that, like, 3D computer animation and YouTube wasn't in, like, any field of scope of what they would understand. Mm -hmm. And I remember, like, I originally wanted to be a chef and then I realised that I don't enjoy cooking when I have to do it. I only enjoy it when inspiration strikes. Mm. Um, so that, and also chefs don't get paid well. So I was like, never mind, don't want that. Um, and then I was <laughs> going to do geography teaching uh, because I love geography. And then don't know what happened, but I just absolutely flubbed the exam and got like a D instead of like the A that I was expected to get. So I was like, never mind, can't go to uni for that now. Um, and then it was interior design was what I was looking at and then 3d computer animation um and i ended up choosing computer animation but i remember at the time my mum was like you could just be like a painter decorator and i was like i i hate doing all that myself like i want to design it and i want to get someone else to actually execute it like <laughs> um so convincing my mum and dad i remember like we went out for dinner and i was like okay this is the place it's like a public spot my mum won't act up if she takes it badly but they ended up understanding i think like once i was kind of able to show my mom like the earnings like i think for a lot of parents it's like once you can show like actual money mm -hmm. it then clicks in their head of like okay this is something you can do so i think after i'd been doing it for like a few months it kind of was like well i've also had to quit my part-time job like to be able to do this i think this just makes sense my university lecturers also agree she turned she was actually okay with that one she wasn't as impressed when i was like also i'm then going to move down to england to be with my friends she was like wait a minute <laughs> Whoa. It's weird. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't consider that dynamic of it. Yeah. It's like, it's going to actually take me further away physically. It's, yeah. This is an interesting gig because <clears throat> when you, you try to explain this to people who are not part of it uh, or don't understand it, it seems not just like a dream. 
it seems like a foolish dream. It, it seems mm-hmm. like you must be losing your mind and you're, you have to go along with the protocol of go to college and do this and that. And there's, it, it, there's something to be said for the fact that it is still a very rare thing to happen. There yeah. still is a, a good amount of chance. So it, that's, I always feel like we have these conversations and we, we end up glorifying the world of content creation because because it's wonderful and we get to be a part of mm-hmm. it and we feel very lucky, but we have to be very keen on that word. There's a lot of luck involved. There's a yeah. lot, obviously the amount of, and we're all aware of them. I'm sure that each of us can probably rattle off 20 names. The amount of creators out there that we know of who are very, very dedicated. They're very, very um, uh, talented and they're, they're driven to the point to where they never, ever stop. And it just hasn't happened for them yet. Yep. And that stuff's hard to see. And that, 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 by the way, that's the majority of this ecosystem, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? We, this, when people make it, it is, so it makes perfect sense why people would be like, what are you doing? But when you show them the results, how you were saying, that's when they're yeah. like, whoa, yeah, maybe you should go do that. <laughs> you know, cause it, cause it <laughs> I happens. think it's so much like I've always said, like YouTube is like, maybe only about 20% actually being good at what you're doing, like making good content. The rest of it is like luck and who you know, like, and also like if you happen to be able, like there are some people now who have figured out how YouTube algorithm works and they're able to play it and tweak it and follow algorithms and like make channels that just blow up right away. Which also like, if that's what you want to do, great. I don't have the drive to do that. Like I want to be making content I enjoy making. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's the same as like i know i wouldn't be anywhere near where i am or i wouldn't have had it if i hadn't had like the friends i have around me kind of thing like getting to meet people like lizzie and joel and then like meeting green down the line which then led to like life series stuff like there's so many it's a lot of like not what you know but who you know with that sort of stuff but you also kind of need those connections to like happen organically rather than like trying to force your way into being like we should be friends because it'll benefit me it's like no, you want to be friends because you enjoy yes. getting on with each other and you yes. mesh. Yeah, that's a like, that's I couldn't agree more, man. I couldn't agree more, and I think that's why I, me personally, I mean, my first exposure to you was the Life series, mm-hmm. and and I remember like it was you were sort of like this other character that was in passing or whatever. But whenever our our paths would cross and we'd have any sort of interaction, I remember just enjoying every bit of it. And when I ended up doing that whole, the, that remember the, the, uh, the you actually, the affirmation. Was this you complimented every day? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. To life. I wanted to identify something unique about each person. And you're the one who actually named it the Affirmation Station. And I'm like, that's such a yeah. better name than the Affirmation <laughs> Tower. But when I had to think about yours, uh, it was very in line with what you're talking about now. How you're saying that you've always been very personable with people and stuff like that. And my designation for you was specifically about your energy. You have a very calming presence and I just feel better around you. So had you had it maybe in a different parallel universe, maybe you became like a, a, a psychologist or something to that effect. It's definitely something you would have flourished at because you're so good at connecting with somebody's heart and you're not even trying to, you're just so yeah. good at it. So I, I look at oh, thank the, you. It, it makes me feel like you're in the perfect spot. And here's why you talk about the fact that you were, you're, you've always been very personable. And then we talked about mm-hmm. all the different paths that you took and the common theme in them, whether it was to be a chef or be a three, 3d rendering or a 3d computer uh, animations, it has a, uh, there's a, a creative space aspect to it. So you have mm-hmm. this guy that people love to be around who has to be in the creative space. Does it, is there anybody more fitting for this world at this point? <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's been, it's just, it's fun to uh, see, work with your, your Minecraft avatar and your voice and then meet you as we did. And we will talk a little bit yeah. about TwitchCon, but then to be back in the room with you here now and see how it all just like, I don't know how else to put it other than it's just, it's really nice when I have full confirmation that the person in front of me is anything but full of crap. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like you're just such a genuine person and it's just, it's just, a, this is a nice moment. It's a, this aura oh, and everything you. coming together. I'm, I'm not going to fit out my office door, but head's going to be too big after this, <laughs> but I appreciate it. It's that. all real. It's all real. The, it's always funny. Cause it's like what you're saying there of like, it's, I've had obviously been doing this for so long and you can very easily pick up when someone's being genuine and disingenuine. Like I find that that's quite easy to know in the creator space. Cause it, it, like the creator space has a lot of elements of like what Hollywood and LA does where they're yep. you're like, do you actually want to know me or do you yep. want to know the people I know? Or do you actually want to know me or do you want into this thing I'm doing? Yeah. Um, and it's always funny because I always remember 
the first time I ever met Green, like we got on what I thought was great. I later found out he didn't like me the first time we met. Oh, really? Not because I did anything. It was just, he was like, no one's that happy. It was like, no one's that happy. He was like skeptical. It's like, there's a reason. And then after a few times of being like, hang out, he's like, turns out that's just you. Yeah. It's like, okay, yeah. I get it now. Like, I'm on board, fine. But I remember being like, oh, I didn't. I didn't realize that I was like coming across as like too happy. Like, uh oh, nah, no. I suppose I suppose that's something as creators get more and more popular um, that they have to be weary about, right? Is mm -hmm. is people coming along that are just wanting to to leech off of mm -hmm. their success or anything like that? And so, um, have you found yourself having any sort of like radar as you're meeting people now? Like like Green may have had when you met him type thing yeah i think for me like i i used to i've kind of dealt with it my entire time doing content creation because like when i sort of became friends with like lizzie and joel and that group at the time i was like a small creator like we ended up only really meeting because i was a fan of lizzie and then like we met at a convention and then we happened like lizzie really liked world of warcraft which i love and her and Joel were like playing and needed like a healer or something. And I was like, I could do it like in chat. And then like, that was literally how our friendship started. Oh, wow. Um, but I always then had it like through the early stages of people. Like I was like, do you actually want me or do you want Lizzie? Like that, like they sort of look at the person they want and then they figure out like the most attainable goal. And it's normally starting at the bottom and working your way up. And then obviously as I got into my own as a creator, the next bit then turned into it was MCC, like where I was like, do you actually want to know me or do you just want an MCC? Because there was a lot of people I met who it was very obvious that they just wanted MCC. Um, and there's like, there's levels where like, I'm very aware of like being an organizer comes with like perks. If I'm like, people tend to be a bit nicer to me because they're like, they want an MCC or they'll want something. So like, I'm not, oblivious to the fact that like i benefit off of that at times when people will be like nicer to me because they want something it ended up it was funny where it was like early like years ago back during the pandemic that was the reason i got invited to the among us group with like five up and half and such was five up wanted an mcc <laughs> and i remember at the time being like well i can't promise that yet but i can put you on the list for whenever that does come around and he was like cool and it ended up like the Among Us group became like a second little content family for me um, through that. So it's again, it's sort of like knowing sometimes if you can do the metaphorical, like scratch my back, I'll scratch you. That also works. It's a business as well as like a friendship thing. Um, yeah, I think you're nailing something there, dude. I, I think, you know, the scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. I think that that's that's real. And that's real in everyday life, not just in entertainment. Mm -hmm. That's just a human dynamic, right? But I understand the whole, like, are you trying to pretend that you like me so that you can get something? Just ask me for the something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, like I, I, I can appreciate where you're coming from because I, and this is, and, and Impulse knows this about me, and it's probably, mm -hmm. actually, this has limited my career in, I've been in IT for decades. Mm -hmm. And I had a, um, there's a boss of mine, okay? Uh, and he was, both, he was actually our boss's boss back in the day. You know who I'm talking about. He's, and he became a big dog. And him and I just always got along. And so I started to be involved in these bigger things with him or whatever. But then we'd go to these big organizations where there were like really higher ups and he'd be like, okay, you need to go rub elbows with this person, that person. And I'm like, I don't, I don't want to. And he's like, you yeah. need to do this. I'm all, and I was like, I don't care about any of that. And, and I was like, dude, I don't hang out with you because you're this big guy. I, I like hanging out with you. And he goes, and he looks at me, I'm all, it's going to limit my career. He goes, it's going to limit your career. I'm like, I don't care. Hmm. And then, but in that moment yeah. he goes, I'm actually the same way. And then, then and all of a sudden you're like <laughs> extra tighter. Cause I just, it's like people who do that, that's their right. They have the right to mm -hmm. do that. That's the, that's their path. They want to, to claw and do their thing. And I don't begrudge them. I don't, I just not interested. You know what I mean? I just, I yeah. want to get to the end of my life and be proud of my decisions. I suppose I, I don't know how else to put it, but mm. that's what I mean when I say like, I just, just major was this other guy on the life series. And every time I passed him, he's kind of nice. And then we talked more and he's really nice. So I talked now, now I admire him and now I like him and I, I really like this guy. Like that's how that ended up working out, you know, <laughs> Yeah. to the point, no, I get that. It's to the point to where there's like, that. I yeah. actually said to you, <laughs> I said, Smager, can I be honest with you for a second? You're all, no, yeah. Here. And I'm all, I've been an, an unbelievable, unbelievable 
to you it, because I was just, I started like, um, it, yeah. but which is what I do. And he knows this impulse knows when I am feeling like, I want to tell him like, I love you, man. It's usually I punch him. And so yeah. I was realized I was like picking on Smager a lot because I just I like him. But I was, but I, <laughs> yeah, was, you, I, you did. Yeah, I was like, oh. it was the way you said that to me. And I was like, I didn't ever take any of it as like serious. It was more like when like your cousin's being annoying. I was like, oh, it's just kids. Like, yeah. it's, it's just kids. <laughs> like, what it was I'm not that worried. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. Like, because I knew there was no like mal like malice behind it. There was no, no ill intent with it. Yeah. And I think like life series specifically is something I think Green very perfectly curated the people in it were like everyone just meshes so well yep. like we we say every time we go into like the calls to record again where it's like it kind of just feels like a family coming together and we're also all very confused how we've done like five seasons off it and not really had arguments like right. every- there's not been a fallout there's not been oh i don't want to be with this person i can't stand that person it's literally like okay sure like yeah every season when it starts i'm like i'm waiting for the honeymoon phase to be over and it's yeah. never it's never, never been over is. after five seasons which is you're, uh, yeah. yeah, crazy. It's uh, we had a we had a group like this when Skiz and I worked in in corporate uh, building together, mm-hmm. where uh, we were in a group that was like curated perfectly by the by the manager of that group. Yep. And and like that group did some of the most amazing things the company had ever mm-hmm. seen. And it just goes to show you like how important that is to put together a cast of people that just gel, just mesh, just are all good people. Yeah. All, all just looking uh, to not be there for themselves, but for each other. And I think that's what the life series brought out. Yeah. A lot of us was like, we were all there to create content for each other, not ourselves, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think like that's always the thing where like we say at the start of the meetings and that, or it's like, when people would try and get really like hall monetary about rules, it's like, we're just making content. Like our goal is to entertain ourselves and each other and the audiences. Like if our rule gets bent or broken here, they're like, if it makes it into a video and you see it, we don't care. Like if you've got to see it, then it's been approved. Like we're fine with it kind yeah. of thing. And yeah. again, it's like you say, it's we all get on. And I think, I think a part of that also comes from like the fact that we all tend to be like a bit older like i think the youngest one in the group is like gem or peril like it's one of those two and they're only like two years younger than me like they're still in their (laughs) mid-20s like Uh i think obviously doing content and like with mcc it kind of meant i got to know a lot of the younger creators and the new people that kind of came into the space during that pandemic time and it's like i see a lot of myself in it i'm also like oh i was messy at that age because you don't know what's happening like there's it's such a new experience. Like people get, uh, you're a lot more emotional and you get your feelings hurt a lot more and you don't know how to communicate it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's been the nice thing where like, yeah, it's like even like with life series stuff, like I remember, I always remember at one time with you Impulse, where it was like, I think it was limited life and I like killed you like twice or three times, like one after each other. That was so and you like funny. shouted at me where you were like, could you just like chill out? And I was like, oh, I didn't realize. I was like, I was just having fun. Like, I just remember. But I also was like, at the same time, I was like, oh, there's no ill intent here. Like, it was just that sort of thing. I was like, oh, can you just stop killing him here? That, like, that's the thing. That's the thing. Cause like you, you come off and you're this like super nice bubbly guy but when it's time to murder somebody oh, dude. no holds barred like you were coming to town and i was like how is he so good i can't get away from this yeah that's the, I, I i love that dichotomy yeah. uh, the fact that you are such a gentle soul but you are deadly yeah. he's deadly. i think it's the i think it's the type of thing where like i was talking about it with cleo before where like with the life series stuff, like, it's as much like a social game as it is like an actual Minecraft skill game. Because it's the amount of times that I'll always see people be like, how does, it was like when we did Secret Life, like, there's a point where it's so many red people, and I just, like, walk up and I'm like, hi guys, what are you up to? Like, and everyone's like, how does, how is he walking in as a green to a group of reds and then walking away from it? Like, and it's like, it's, just, it's a, like, social dungeon, you build up, like, repertoire with people. And I think also, like, there are things also, like, within the life series i think i probably rank higher in like pvp skills but then like when it comes to mcc it's like ah, like i'm, I'm way down here like <laughs> i think it's the group for it means that like i'm able to have a bit more fun and i'm not trying as much in that sense like oh, i can just i'm not over comp like compensating or over calculating things i'm just like let's just have fun if i kill someone i do if i don't i don't and i think when you remove that like in a, or the like block that you kind of have of like oh i need to run it helps it's the same i always remember when cleo took over 
for no Jem took over for Cleo that one day. And it was a fight she had with Etho, and it was like from like that POV. She was on like one heart, but Etho got scared because she wasn't acting like she was in one heart. Yeah. So you like ran away and then died. And it's like, yeah, you, if you just go for it and people don't know that you're low, they tend to like panic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you mentioned that you had some time playing Among Us, which is a social deduction mm -hmm. uh, game. So do you feel like your time that you spent, uh, you know, lying to people in Among Us helped with the life series? Oh, a hundred percent. I never like considering myself like a good liar. Not that it's a skill you necessarily need to have or want to know you have. <laughs> but right. I think when it came to Among Us, I was like, oh no, wait, I'm good at this. Like I was like, oh, okay. And I think part of it comes from what you were saying there of like, I have this very like bubbly personality. But then when it comes to like the fighting thing, I can kind of like very focus in and go for it. And I think that was where the Among Us thing came from as well, as people didn't expect me to lie or make up the complicated lies I was doing. The only one I used to hate playing Among Us with was Lizzie. Because like, we've been friends for like eight years now, so like she would, even if I didn't do anything or say anything, she'd be like, it's Scott. And I'm like, <laughs> right, why, I've, I've not seen you. Like, yeah, yeah, it got to the point where I had to eventually message her and I'd be like, you're taking content from me now because you're assuming that I've done nothing to you. Like, yeah. there's no reason for you to know it's me. I don't want to have to keep killing you first. Like, yeah, that happened with uh, with the group that we played in because uh, Skiz and I have known each other for so long. He picks up on all my tells like easily. Yep. And he found himself like knowing it was me, but holding back that information because it would destroy the, it would destroy the your content. It would destroy the content. Yeah, yeah, I had an unfair advantage. Yeah. Because I guess yeah. I've just we've known each other for so long. I would mute so that nobody in the group could hear, and I would tell my stream. I'm like, it, it's yep. impulse, and I'm like, but I'm not yep. going to say anything because that's the, it's it's not fair. And then I go back, and it was fun to watch it, yeah. you know, do it. Saying so at first, I, I wasn't at first. I was playing the game, and I'm like, oh, okay, guys, I've known impulse a long time. This is what's happening. And then it just was like, what am I doing? Like, back off a little bit, man. It was, yeah. it was too much. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's like, there's a time and place. And I think like, obviously back when it was Among Us was as big as it was. And we were playing it so frequently. Like, I don't know about you, Lop. Like, I used to stream Among Us like every day, basically, uh, during the pandemic. I want to. it was like the perfect storm of like, no one could do anything. So everyone was like, well, I'm at home anyway, so I may as well stream. And it meant it was easy to get like 10 people together mm -hmm. for the same like stream hours. But yeah, like you used to have those like, oh, it felt good to have that big brain moment of catching someone out. But also then back then, like the main content came from when you were an imposter and you got to do a big play. So there was times where it's like, it makes more sense for me to bite my tongue here. And I would do what you did, Skiz, where like, as soon as it would finish a meeting, I'd be like, I'm going to avoid this person. I wouldn't say why. Yeah. I would obviously meta knowledge no, but I'd be like, I can't like go near them. I don't want to take that content. Or you'd be like, I hope someone kills me this round. Otherwise, I will have to at the next meeting. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, we got to get go. We got to get Among Us going. I, know, I don't. I, I miss it. 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 I don't know. Um. Maybe you went through the same thing, but it's like we played. It, we played weekly. Uh, it was like our Friday, Friday night thing. We had yep. a, a a lobby that was. Uh, we always ready to go on Friday nights, and I think we played for almost two years. And, wow, that and, long. Yeah, we, we went a good stretch, and it, it just people stopped uh enjoying yeah. the game because eventually you've like you've told every lie you've pulled yeah. every every shenanigan you can you know what i mean and at least that's how it felt and so um as as you start as your lobby starts to fall apart i mean that's pretty much it it's, it's yeah. hard to find another group kind of like you know putting together a good cast you got the same yeah. thing with a lobby and among us you got to have 10 people that uh get along yeah, you know? yeah. we uh, had where like obviously we kind of had the same thing of like as a group it got to the point where like you're playing so long like you could tell oh hafu stretched so it's hafu like it got to that point and like we tried doing like modded among us which kind of revitalized it for a bit but again you start then you're like oh well they're acting this way because they're a jester and they want voted out or they've done this thing or that like you start to pick up tells and such and i think like we all kind of like pulled away from it for a good few months and then i think what we ended up all realizing we missed was like it wasn't necessarily among us it was just that everyone being on call for the few hours like hang out and chatting and like riffing off each other so like we now play among us just like every wednesday like the sort of thing where it's like we play every wednesday night sometimes people will be like oh, i can't do this weekend that's fine other times you can like and again it's that sort of thing where like we found a nice medium now where like none of us take it seriously so we're able to like just do wackier things or you don't you're like i remember back in the day you used to like count people doing tasks to see if they were faking it like you'd see them go up to download and you'd be like one two yep 
great. Like you'd count it. And you're like, <laughs> they took twelve seconds. It's only ten. Like, yeah. Whereas now, yeah. Whereas now, where I'm like, as an imposter, I'm like, I think there's a task here. I'll just stand over here and like, hopefully. Oh, like. Yeah. God, I remember all those dynamics. I remember being yeah. an imposter, doing exactly what you said. Yeah. I, I think I, I'm standing where they're supposed to. Like at one point, I think I was just yeah. looking at a door, and, and somebody was yeah. like, "Skiz, you're the imposter. There's no task there." I'm like, "Dang it!" Like you, you get yeah. lost. But did you ever do it with the uh, with the mods? Like, yeah, yeah, that's what we play now. Is like every Wednesday we do modded among us, just because <clears throat> we find like doing like fourteen people because that's what obviously they increase it to like up to fifteen. So we tend to have anything from like ten to about fourteen people, and doing that with like two imposters and nothing else is like really difficult. And then although among us added like a few mods, like an engineer or like an angel or something, like they didn't add enough. So we still play with the modded one because there's a lot of like extra added elements of like oh well i seen like hafu kill someone but was it hafu or was it a morphling or was it a glitch like there's mm -hmm. so many ways to kind of like what used to be a yep check you're out now there's a level of doubt that people can add on to um so yeah like going back to very vanilla among us now is always like oh god how do i like why is there so little to do like, <laughs> man we gotta get back in yeah that. we we started to get into some of the modded stuff and then uh, it, you have the tendency to just like throw everything in at once. And it's mm -hmm. like, there's like 10 new roles and everybody's like so confused in the meetings. On, like we're straight trying to learn the roles. So I think what yep. we did, we dialed that back. And we're like, okay, we're just going to turn on Jester. Okay. We're just yeah. going to turn on Morphling, you know, and, and that kind of thing. And then yeah. we, we did find it, that now you had to rebalance the, yeah. the game it, from what you knew, you know? Yeah. But yeah, well, that was, oh man. Yeah, you make me want to play again. Yeah, it's we, been, it's been I was going to say, I was like, can long. we get a Life Series group now? Can we just, can oh, we just get a friend for Among Us? Life Series members play Among <laughs> Us. Could you imagine? That'd be fun. <laughs> that would. The, uh, we'll, we'll pitch this to Green for season yeah. six. <laughs> we'll, let's, yeah. let's, let's Sorry guys, the next Life Series is in Among Us. <laughs> <laughs> could you imagine? <laughs> That's pretty That's funny. the next twist for the Life Series is at the end of every session, we all go to our table and then we vote someone out. <laughs> <laughs> Survivor. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yes, exactly. Oh, that'd be fantastic. Um, so I want to go back in time a little bit because you said that mm -hmm. you early on would create a channel, do it for six months, give up on it, and um, when you finally got to this channel, dang, that's a long mm -hmm. name. Uh, what yep. what made it stick? Like, how come you um, didn't give up on it? What was what kept you going this time around? Well, fun enough for this one, like I did, I started it as like a vlog channel. And when I say vlog, it was like me sat with a camera, but like doing like either little skit bits or like Q&A or like this. there was sort of like chat, just chatting kind of thing. Um, And I did eventually, like I ended up, I tried it for a few months. This is when I was around college. And then I like stopped kind of thing for maybe like six months. And then I think it was probably becoming then friends with Lizzie. And that, like, sort of, like, then we used to start playing, like, I'd be involved when I'd do Gary's mod, uh, because obviously, like, it was fun to get, like, extra people in and do prop hunt or, like, mm -hmm. that sort of stuff. And we ended up, like, that was sort of the re-spark for, like, okay, like, maybe I should give this another go. Um, so I, like, basically unlisted most of the, the vlog stuff that I had. Like, I left, like, a couple. And then just started uploading gaming content from there, and it just sort of, like, stuck from that. I think suddenly then having a group of people that to help bounce content off of was always better. I never really enjoyed, like, single-player games. It's the same as, like, now, like, I will play the type of games I love are, like, World of Warcraft, which is, like, an MMO. I like TFT or League of Legends, which, again, I like knowing that, like, as I'm sat playing, there's someone else somewhere in the world also sat playing at the exact same time, and, like, I love that, like, feeling of connection with video games. Mm -hmm. um, I think the only single player game i played for a really long time is like Baldur's gate 3 like i put like a hundred hours and like two weeks into that game when it dropped because i was like <laughs> i need to just sit and play three hours a night like um but for me that's always been a i that was the spark is finding a group that let me make content with people that's where i've always found bouncing off of other people i tend to come to my best self kind of thing yeah so as, as, aside from like because you could have like your single player let's plays in Minecraft or your multiplayer servers. I obviously you were probably drawn more towards the multiplayer experience yeah. from the sounds of it. Were you in SMPs early on, or is that something that's been um, more re recent for you? No, I've been doing SMPs for eight years now, kind of thing. Okay. It started like way back. I tried like single player series as everyone does, and I think I did. Like the thing I always found back in the day was like 
when it's a single player server, you always end up finding that like after a while you start cut it's easier to cut corners where it's like, oh, I'm going away in this trip, like oh, I'm gonna have to spend so long getting this material or mining it. And you're like, well, it's single player, I'm doing it for content. Like if I just spawn in this thing, it's fine. And like once you've done it once, like it's <laughs> that's it. Like once you've done it once, it rolls. Yeah. So I think doing like servers with people is like it tended to A stop that because you're like, if you can't do it for me, I can't do it for anyone, kind of thing, and vice versa. And I liked being able to like log in and see like things have changed or there was a prank or a note and it sort of made it just feel more alive. Even if you'd logged on the server several times and there was no one else on, just knowing that you would see things had been built and movement had kind of happened, mm -hmm. it helped. But it started, I think it was way back, Crazy Craft was the first one I did, um, which was with like Lizzie and Joel and CPK and Ollie and all this sort of stuff. And then it was, I think, Trollcraft after that. Um and then I think it, we made like Funcraft was the other thing. And then it turned into, oh God, what did we go after that? There's so many. It started, we did a bunch of crafts. So it was like Crazy Craft, Fun Craft, Troll Craft. <laughs> and then we did like One Life and uh, X Life and then After Life. Um, because it then made it confusing when, like, Green started, like, the life yeah, CDs. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, no, those are two different things. Those are two different things. Like, one was a group here, and then life CDs was here. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that we also adopted the life name yeah. that long ago, because we're like, we can't add craft to another thing. There's only so many words it works with. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want to dive into the journey of MCC. Oh. I want to go back to oh. a time in your life that you remember that was right before MCC was a reality, because I want to, if you'd be willing to disclose some mm -hmm. of the conversations and the ideas, because I look at MCC as it's obviously massive, right? And just for anybody, I mean, one, first That's what of I'm going to say, it just dawned on me that yeah. we've, we've mentioned MCC a few times. And right. haven't, uh, I guess we're assuming everybody knows what, what it is. Yeah. So I, I think we'll start there. Maybe, maybe Scott can tell us about yeah. Explain what MCC is yes. if any any of our listeners don't know. So yeah, if, if anyone doesn't know, MCC is it stands for MC Championship because legally you're not allowed to have Minecraft at the start of a name. So it's, we were like MC, um, <laughs> but it's a live streamed event. Uh, we tend to do once a month, but we're currently on a break, and it's like forty streamers from all different areas of the internet. Some mostly Minecrafters, but we occasionally like throwing in like Valkyrie and Pokemon and Ludwig, like all these people that don't normally do Minecraft, but like would step their toes into it and basically the players uh compete in a random selection of eight different mini games um to see who can get the most coins and the top two teams then make it into dodgebolt which is just dodgeball in minecraft so you get hit once you're out kind of thing and the winners eventually get a little coin uh, fun enough i have like this is my mcc square so oh, like all yeah. of the different coins oh, and badges cool. and everything is in here because it's been funny see like mcc has taken me places and done things that i never thought it would like it never in any of our scopes would have blown up to the levels it did um it's just been a fun ride to kind of go along with yeah. so go back to the beginning when it was just an idea and it in like what were those conversations like so it originally started because i ended up it was so weird for i remember i was streaming minecraft and then of all people to come to my chat was keemstar now i don't like keemstar i'm not a fan of like who, what the work he does and all that sort of stuff but he came in and was like oh, i'm posting this like minecraft event if you can like he gave me was like if you can kill five creepers in 10 minutes like you can join and i was like okay sure like i think what ended up happening was like i had my pride month slot on twitch so i was like on front page which meant my viewers were really inflated so i think he thought i was like this massive streamer <laughs> um and that ended up, like, I got into uh, MC, like, it was Minecraft Mondays at the time. That was it. This was sort of the first big Minecraft event where, like, it was 40 creators coming together. And, like, that one was so poorly ran. Like, it was, most of it was in, like, a Twitter DM. Um, you had to post your stats, like, your statistics from your streams after each stream. And if you didn't hit a certain view threshold, you got kicked from it. Oh, my gosh. Um, I used to, like, if there was times where I had a lower one, I would just, like, f12 in bed like up some numbers and be like here <laughs> but at the time me and my friend uh, i has cupquake we kind of were like we really like the the feeling of bringing these 40 creators together and like having fun and streaming with people but we're like but we don't like how it's being ran and who's kind of in charge of it because like it feels so scummy like view counting people um so we ended up we we're like 
I wonder if there's a way we could do this, like do our own Minecraft event that wasn't just a rehash of like survival games and all this sort of stuff. So we ended up like, I was like, I know some people at like Knox Crew that I met like earlier this year. I was like, I'll message and see if they know anyone because I was like, they make bedrock maps and such now. And I knew of like the Knox Crew game show like in passing. So I was like, maybe they'll be like interested in doing it kind of thing. So I ended up like reaching out to Noxite, um, who I'd only met that year. And it was funny because we'd both been at this like Minecraft creator summit that Mojang did, and we never interacted once, like never cross paths, never spoke. But he ended up, he had spoke to Shovel at the time. And when we were at E3 and obviously me and Shelby are like best friends, she was like, I'm going to meet up for lunch with this guy Noxite. Do you want to come? And I was like, sure, I'll crash. Like I've, I've got nothing else to do. Um, so we ended up going like, Stefan and me realized that like we lived really close together like in the UK and I remember at the time because he was like oh we should meet up like hang out sometime it's that thing like people say to be polite like <laughs> I was like oh yeah like yeah we should kind of thing and then I remember like getting home and him messaging like oh so when do you want to hang out and I was like oh you were serious oh oh okay <laughs> sure um right like let's be up this time kind of thing and we end up building that like repertoire there so then when I reached out to him I think it was in like August of like 2019 and i was like hey i've been playing these minecraft mondays we want to try and do our own thing like do you know anyone that would be like a company that would be willing to do it kind of thing because also like me and tiff were like we don't have a lot of money to kind of put behind this here like it's and i know minecraft stuff can be expensive and like instantly stefan was like us we're doing it you're not taking it anywhere else like not as we're doing this like we're gonna have fun with this because they had sort of started out as like a company that were doing maps for fun like when they did like uh terra Swip force and all this sort of stuff it was just people having fun with friends and it then turned into a business when it was like bedrock maps so he was kind of like oh my god this is like we can redo like the game show we can take it elements from the game show and obviously adapt and make it bigger and that's sort of where that started and stemmed from was like they were like okay we'll make the games and i was like okay i'll get the people so it ended up just me going around like hi i know you've already done like so many minecraft events recently but like would you like to do this one like i promise it will be good like <laughs> we ended up having to make like a word like presentation document to like send people like with all the info um and luckily for a lot of like the creators who'd been in the space before just having nox crew attached to it was enough of like okay we know what they do they're great we're in and then i had a lot of like my manager at twitch reached out to other people they knew which is how like i ended up getting people like Pilza or Captain Sparkles or uh, Cara Corvus, like those people I had no connection to, mm. but Twitch did. And then through over time went on, like I'm now good friends with all of them. Um, but yeah, it was just sort of like the perfect mix of I had been in this space long enough and had good connections to people, which then got amplified with Among Us. So suddenly my outreach in that blew up. And then Nox Crew made such a good project that. I was more like batting people away with a stick of like, I'm sorry, you can't come in. There's only 40 spaces. Like, please. One thing that's interesting to me about MCC is it's it's not about it's not like these like normal Twitch rivals events where it's people mm -hmm. are playing for money. It's it's yeah. more of a combination of yeah, there's obviously competitiveness. Um, you have your your sweaty tryhards, of course. Yeah. But it's it's more about just the fun and games of it all. You know, like uh, there's no payoff at the end other than the, the coin, uh, which yeah. is amazing. I have one and I love it. Uh, <laughs> but it was always, yeah, it was the thing we sort of thought very early on is it was like, again, all these Minecraft tours, like you said, were for money. And it was like, it was always just the same people winning it because they're the ones who are the best at the game and they're going to sweat it and do that. And like, I remember like Minecraft Mondays, there was one time where me and my friend, like Lauren, won around to survival games with like the worst armor like we I, I still look back i'm like i don't know how we did that but like it was such an elated moment and like we don't win any money but just that moment was like i want to capture that and make the entire event feel like that mm -hmm. where it doesn't matter if you have a bad game or a bad thing but you can pull something off and like rocket sleeve rush or ace race or you get something and it then turned into like we didn't bring out the coins for mcc until like three or four events into it like because at the time we were like people will just do it for fun and then eventually we're like, we want them to have something physical. And that was when we we're like, let's do a coin because you collect coins in game, let's make one. Um, but yeah, I think doing that, like, yeah, there's a lot of people who obviously it's like their reputation is what they're kind of playing for. Uh, like the Purples and the Firebreath Mans and the Jojos, like they want to be the best because that's the brand they've built. 
Mm-hmm. But at the same time, like, if they don't win, they're not like, oh, God, like, I'm going to struggle to pay rent this month. Like, they're not sweating it because it's like, okay, you've got a coin. Like, there's a small coin that when I ship them, I just write novelty coin value zero. <laughs> like, yeah. um, no, but that's you guys are <clears throat> touching on something. There's a difference in performing for uh, prestige and performing for mm-hmm. a purse. And, I, and I'm not knocking people who perform for a purse. That's a very real part of, of life. I get it. But this is why, like in the world of sports, for example, there's such a huge demographic of people that gravitate towards collegiate sports to, to, because yeah. it's a, they, because those people now, granted, the, these athletes are playing with the hope of getting uh, somewhere later. But there is it's really about the W. It's about the game. It's about mm-hmm. the love and the passion for the craft, where as soon as it moves into the, the pros, it's a whole different level. Where, you know, you had this this athlete that was one year ago in college performing as a peak performer. And then you fast forward one year and all of a sudden they're being showered with like millions upon millions of dollars. And the the optics are so skewed. And now the game has sort of taken. Now, now the, the, it feels to the people who love the game, it feels like the officials and the, uh, and, and the, um, the, the, the heads in charge of the program are protecting them even more because that person's become a financial investment. So it be, takes on this whole different dynamic. And that is the charm that MCC has is that it really is just about the prestige mm-hmm. of the moment. And just, it reminds me of being a kid playing football with my friends in the street. And it was just all you got, you didn't get money. You got sweaty and you got blood, yeah. you got bloody, you know, but but it was just at the end of the day, this this weird feeling of accomplishment for the things you did because you just loved the craft. And yeah. that's what MCC captures. I had to like have a think there because obviously you use sports analogies for a game UK person. So you also, <laughs> when you were like, you got bloody in football, I was like, football's not a contact sport. What was he playing? And I'm like, oh, he means like, American football. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah, thinking yeah, of yeah. soccer. I'm like, I was like, what type of really violent soccer are you playing in the streets just like beating people? Yeah. But it was like when we ended up doing the MCC Twitch Rivals like in Vegas last year, that was such a thing where like from their side, like from a Twitch side, they legally have to have like prize money. Like that has to be a thing. And I remember at the time we were like, right, I'm very scared of that because I was like, MCC has always worked because there wasn't prize money. Like, how do we make this still feel like an MCC and not have people like try harding it? And obviously, we ended up going down the route of just taking the money they gave us, dividing it equally, and being like, everyone just gets basically paid to play kind of thing. It felt like the nicest. I mean, everyone was like, I had a good time and I came away with money. Like, sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was funny because obviously Twitch then came back and they were like, so legally, we need to have like a difference in money for first place. Like, they need to get a bit more. So that's where like, okay, we'll give first place a hundred dollars more than everyone else. So then like, second through tenth, exact same. And everyone came away with it like, great, that covered part of my trip or that covered yeah. this thing. And it was sort of like a it was a nice feeling getting to kind of give back to the creators. Cause obviously, like we MCC wouldn't have got to where it was if it wasn't for the creators, both like being so excited behind it, getting their audiences excited behind it, and sort of like helping us build this brand so it was nice to be able to be like oh we're doing this thing and i can get you all like some financial like repayment like that's a nice little like tech okay everyone comes away like hee hee this was nice yeah, yeah um, that was super rather fun. than having people fight out and like if you were 10th and you're like i got a hundred dollars and first is always like 10k each <laughs> like yeah no that was super cool i as a contestant in that i appreciated that i thought that was really nice because like I didn't sweat it at all. I didn't bring my own mm-hmm. keyboard and mouse. And, and I, I knew that was going to be an issue for me when I got there, just because I'm so used to like having all the buttons where yeah. I have them. Right. And in that event, I completely struggled because it wasn't my yeah. gear. And at the same time, I didn't have to care because I was sitting next to my teammates. You know what I mean? Like yeah. any one of us did something great in the game where I could just reach over and high five them. We could stand up and hug each other and stuff. Like it was, it was really, really cool to um, have that ability to like be in person and you kind of get this, like you spend so much time on the internet, right? As content creators in our world, in our space, we spend all this time over discord or whatever, getting to know each other. Yeah. But we don't truly know each other yeah. until we like get a chance to physically meet in person and get that amazing Scott Major hug. And, <laughs> and you know what I mean? Like you start to realize that that all these people that you've worked with virtually are actually like real people and real normal yeah. human beings. And that's like when I feel like real connections are made. So that was that was it, great that you were able to get that event put together. 
It was always one of the things I loved of, like, I always used to say, like, MCC was, like, the Smash Bros of Minecraft, where, like, I was the the random envelope giver, where I'd be like, you've been chosen, come and play, like, <laughs> this is your time. And it was always fun taking people, like, from, like, I'd put, take hermits, and then I would take, like, the Empire's people, and I'd take some speedrunners and the PvPs, and, like, you ended up with connections of, like, green really loving fruit berries like he never would there's no world in which those two ever would have really crossed before mm -hmm. or like h bomb and some of the hermits like he just started collecting you where he's like i yeah. need to have all the hermits like i think i loved doing that out on like just general mcc so then taking it to rivals and vegas and getting to actually see everyone like meet in the backstage bit and like oh my god it's you and like going up and like chatting and hugging and i was just like every time i'd kind of look and just sort of like appreciate it of like this is so cute. Like, I love knowing that all these people met through the thing that we've done and they've actually made friendships and connections and it's so nice seeing, like you said, getting to know people, it's different when you're in person. Yeah. And it was just so nice being able like, to be the catalyst for that. Yeah, the, the reason why I really wanted to be an MCC was because I, I like getting to to meet people in, in our space. Just because I've so far found that like almost every single content creator that I've met in this space has been just an absolute delight. And so now I'm yeah. on a mission to meet as many people as possible. Yeah. Yep. And I, sometimes, you know, like right away when there's just a, a gem of a human being, like mine, mine was the first MCC I was in, uh, with B dubs. Like we didn't know what we were doing. We were brand new and oh, yeah. we jumped on the, uh, practice server and mm -hmm. Jojo was there and I'd never yeah. met Jojo before. I had no idea who she was really. And she immediately just wanted to jump in a call and, and tr train us, teach us everything she yeah. knew. And she was just fantastic. Like one of the best like jo trainers I've great. ever had. You know, she yep. was able to like teach us all sorts of stuff to, to uh, and we actually went on winning that one. And I'd yeah. like to credit Jojo for that because of how much <laughs> she taught us. But after that, like Jojo and I kind of became friends to where like now all of a sudden we're doing more collabs and we're playing Lethal Company together and Phasmo yeah. and stuff. Like, so I just met, I just met somebody. She's one of many that I've met yeah. in MCC. Like I remember you, said, you saying that. To me where you were like that was the main reason you played i remember way back mm -hmm. when because i was asking like are you okay if i team you with this person you were like my goal for this is to meet people so like please because yeah. there are some people who like playing mcc and they only like playing with people they know because it's what they feel comfortable streaming and like if that's how they think they're going to get the best content like sure it just obviously when you have more restrictions like that you're less likely to play all of them whereas like, i love having you in it because you're again like you're like jojo and fire breath man is another one who's like mm -hmm. just put me with anyone even scott like scar is the same where he's like this is the only way I get to meet new people. He's like, just shove me with anyone you think I'll mesh with. Yeah. And I think it's something that like I, it took me a long time to get like good at. I think it took maybe like five or six events where like I very carefully, like I under, I make teams based on vibes basically is how I do it now. Where like I know everyone in the event and their personalities and the type of content they make. And I know who's I'm quite good at like connecting those dots and being like, oh well, it was like you were saying, I was like, I know Impulse and V dubs, they're great. And Jojo's a really good teacher. And I was like, this is the first event, they're not gonna know what to do. I was like, Jojo's such a good like teacher at like telling you how to do it without sounding like um what's the word? Um, condescending. condescending. It begins with a P. Yeah, condescending. Like yeah. you don't, and like they don't feel passive aggressive if you mess up, kind of thing. Like yeah. Jojo's so good at just being like, no, it's fine. Like, come on, like but keeping your morale up as well. Um, so it's always the thing that I've liked doing is like basically making teams on vibes first, and then making sure the vibes are balanced. <laughs> yeah, and then going from there. It's it's worked out. I like one of the um, pairings that. I had that I really enjoyed it. And this is one that, that I would have never seen coming was me and Filza, uh, yeah. we're, we're on a team and, uh, it, just the dude's got so much energy, you know, and, yeah. and he's also like you, dad's a, you know, so we share this, yeah. this kind of dad vibe. But, um, I just remember during that event, like, I don't think we were doing well as a team, but it did not matter because w just the yeah. vibes were so high and we were just laughing our heads off at everything. And, um, and that gave me a chance to, to get to know someone who I definitely, uh, in, at this point, there's no lines drawn between me and Phil's as far as like our Minecraft content creation worlds go. There's no crossover at yeah. all. And so this gave us that time to uh, actually meet and, and that was great. Like I, I had so much fun. Yeah. So there's so many, like, it's funny cause there are a couple people, like I remember way back when I'd be like, oh, I'm going to pick with this person. And they're like, Oh, I don't really know. Like I, I'm just not sure I would vibe with them. And I'm like, 
I need you to just trust me that I think you'll get on. Like, as knowing <laughs> you both, I think you will. And then after it, like, I remember them coming back and being like, you were right. Like, that was great. I had a great time. And I'm like, thank you. You're like, okay, good. <laughs> it's become less about that's my the goal competition is, and more about matchmaking, yeah. right? <laughs> my goal was always, like, I think back in the early stages, I used to try, i just pair people up with who they knew, or I would try and make it, like, balanced, but not think about vibes. And, like, I'd have people be like, hey, can you not team me with this person again? Like, I didn't get on. And I was like, I remember feeling bad because I was like, oh, God, like, you didn't have a good time playing the event I organized. Like, that's always my number one goal is I'm like, I want people to walk away being like, I had a great time. Like, and there are, it's the same, it's just, it's what I learned with like, adding that bit on the sheet where like, I didn't used to always have the like, what do you play MCC for? Because then I'd be putting people who are there to try hard and sweat with people who are just having fun. And like, no one has fun in that situation. So now having this like, oh, well, I know Impulse is just happy to play however. So I'm not going to put him with, or you're perfect because I can put you with anyone. Whereas like I wouldn't put someone who's like, oh, I'm just here to goof around with someone who's like trying to like get their fifth win or something. Like mm -hmm. I learned after a long time of doing it that like those don't mesh together. So let's keep them apart. Let's talk about some of the challenges that you face. You mentioned the event got big, bigger than you could mm -hmm. have imagined. Um, and to the point to where people are are asking you to to be in it and you have to put them on a waiting list. I mean, yep. uh, now we're talking people that are, are you have relationships with, your, your friends potentially that are, you, you can't just, yeah, you're in because you're my friend. I mean, yep. what, how hard has that been for you to like get all the people in that want to be in and balance it all out? It's been, it's very difficult. Like I'm such a people pleasery person that like I've spent a lot of my adulthood like learning to try and get away from a bit, like not be as like, yes, okay, putting everyone else's things first. And I think MCC kind of forced me to because it's that balancing act of like, well, I don't want to bench or ditch the people who have been with us from the start and helped us get to this point. I also don't want to be saying no to every single person that comes in because it then gets a bit stale. Like you need to kind of be adding new people and bench people. And luckily everyone within MCC mostly our like understanding of like it's a content space you can't guarantee that you get to play in everything like every month like they just appreciate when they can kind of thing um i think it was more like i never really had much issues with like the actual players themselves it's more like any grievances i ever ended up having was like with the general like audience of mcc that was where i always ended up running into issues of like you, everyone has an opinion and the thing i learned with the internet is everyone wants to tell you their opinion and how you, their opinion is better than what you've done and it took a lot of like learning and getting an extra layer of like like i'm an i'm an openly gay person on the internet like i have fairly thick skin mm -hmm. but i think with like mcc specifically was like before that you were like i was quite kept to like an audience the only time that people ever seen me was either a viewer of mine or a viewer of people i'm friends with so i'm put on like a a nice light kind of thing of like oh this is my friend like you should like my friend whereas mcc was the first time where like i'm kind of getting criticized by every area of like the minecraft sphere and people don't have a reason to know who i am or like have a thing so they'll just be like oh well my good creator didn't enjoy this so i don't enjoy you kind of thing and that was a lot of like learning to deal with kind of thing mm. um and something i still learn with that honestly the the best <laughs> solution i had was stop using twitter <laughs> yeah yeah sometimes <laughs> yeah sometimes that's a good idea is to, to take a break especially when uh things aren't all mm -hmm. you know butterflies and rainbows right so well, well i'm i'd be curious to like hearing about <clears throat> your view of of having a thick skin and having to deal with everything what is your take on when you release a just a youtube video uh out of a thousand comments how many of the thousand comments are you reading on that video i mean it sort of chops and changes like it i'd say i've kind of gone through phases of like early youtube you kind of you read everything kind of thing and then obviously like you get to a point where like if i'm busy or i'm traveling i don't have time to i tend to get like my audience interaction and like reading comments through twitch i find that a much more personable place to mm. be because i can read the chat in lifetime like i'm able to see it and like you're able to build a repertoire with people as they're chatting back and forth um whereas like youtube i kind of go through phases i've learned like during my more like <laughs> hated eras where people don't like what i've done or said or with mcc stuff like i tend not to look at comments for things <laughs> for my own sanity 
And then when it's chill like it is now, like I'll read my comments and I'll like like a few or the other bit right now is just going through and deleting all the like random uh, bot accounts that are commenting stuff. And I'm like, we don't need you. Like yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need to actually see what the actual people are saying. Um, but yeah, like I think it's something like it's always one of those things I learned early on with content creation is like it, your brain latches onto like the negative things. Like if someone says something horrible, you can, it can be sandwiched in between two really good compliments, but you, your brain just focuses on that mm -hmm. one. And I found to like protect my own mental well being, I kind of had to like stop reading just everything because it's hard. You can't take the good without the bad when you do that. And I think it's kind of better to just live in a like ignorance is bliss sort of situation of like, I like the video and streams seem to like the video. So that's fine. Like, yeah, I think that's good. I think that's healthy. Yeah, I was talking to a fellow creator the other day about this, actually, and they said they start to read a comment, and if it seems like it's going in a negative direction, they immediately stop. They don't even finish reading. They just move on. Yeah, mm -hmm. they just move on the second they pick up a tone that it's going to be negative. And for that that exact reason, Scott, I mean, we're a lot of like that way. We will uh, focus in on, on the negative and just ignore. There could be a hundred or 99 amazing comments and that yep. one comment that's not amazing that's this uh, criticizing or or what sometimes people really find that that insecure spot that you know yeah. when, when you do something when we when we create art um you know the, you, there's always a little spot that you're a little insecure about and if they find that and they poke that like yep. that's that's where it's it's really hard and i had to learn too and i go through my phases of like being really good about not feeding the troll you know and, yeah. and just ignoring it or deleting it and and uh but it still sticks in my head and then and then sometimes i'll just they caught me on the wrong day don't say that yeah and i'll bite back and, and i always kick myself afterwards for for even engaging yeah. i've i've had several situations where i'm like oh that wouldn't happen if i just bit my tongue like right. if i just didn't engage in that and i think it's something like i struggled with well i remember it's one of the things that stopped me using twitter but I remember at the time sort of saying to Lizzie about it and she was like, it makes sense why you like clapped back with it because like the type of person I am and like the, a lot of my humor comes from like watching like drag race and like that kind of like gay culture stuff and like drag culture. And it's very like witty kind of like clapping back, like pretend reading, like throwing little shady remarks, but it's all done with like love and that sort of thing. You'll all know it from like when we do life series and I make little like jigs and like that sort of thing. It's part of my humor. And it ends up like most of the time when you clap back at like a troll in Twitch, like someone coming in being homophobic and I'll like point it out or like sort of make a deal about it. And most of my chat are like, haha, like that person's bad, blah, blah, blah. And it's sort of like you get praised for it. So then when you do it outside of that space and it goes horribly wrong, you're like, oh God, that isn't the way I meant it. Or like, <laughs> I realized I was like that. I didn't put the tone right there, this sort of thing. And it was like, a, as you said, I end up, you're always like, I shouldn't have done it. Like so much of my life would have been much easier if I didn't. And I think just, as I said, for me, removing myself from like a Twitter space helped a lot with that. Because if you're in my chat, you tend to, you know who I am, you know, the humor I do with my YouTube videos and my Twitch stuff. So like they know it's all, and I just tend to like now if I'm ever snarky or sassy, it tends to be with people who are regulars who know that I'm like that. Yeah. <laughs> or I will always preface at the end with like, I'm joking, by the way, everything is sarcastic. Like, you're totally fine. Like, it's altered the way that I act with people. And like, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just, it's, again, learning to adapt as things change and what I used to be able to get away with, you now can't. And it's you're just learning to adapt with that. Um, or as you said, it's also like learning, you know, the jokes you can make with people you know more. And certain mm -hmm. people where you're like, oh, I don't know them. And I think that's one of the things I've then also had to like talk with my chat before where it's like, sometimes you'll get new chatters or people that come in, they'll also like try and join in on a joke, but it just comes across as rude. And it's like the reason the jokes work when I make it with like impulse or skiz or gem or peril, like these people is because we know each other and we know that there's like always love behind it. Yep. Um, but when you're just a random person coming in and saying something like, oh, that builds ugly or really that block palette, like it just reads as rude. Like mm -hmm. you have to, you have yeah. to have that dynamic. You're right. There was a, there was a moment in this last life series where if you remember, we would get, it was secret life. So we'd get special yeah. tasks that we had to do. And my first task was I had to be within 
uh, fifth, 10 blocks of gem oh, for 10 yeah. minutes. That is an extremely <laughs> long time. And that, and she can move. Right. So I'm, yeah. you know, and I'm just trying to play it off. I'm trying to start these random conversations. Cause it was the three of you together. I'm trying yeah. to start these random conversations and just stay in proximity with gem. And I had a timer on my screen, the whole thing. Well, when I, <laughs> when it was done, I got my 10 minutes done. I left and, uh, Spager's all okay. That was weird, right? <laughs> said, I was like, that's weird even for skins, <laughs> that's right? What I, yeah. that's what I was like, that's weird even for skins. Yeah. As, as in the undertone is, skins is already weird, but that was extra. <laughs> and you actually used the word extra, but that was extra. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's not even like, because yeah, it's not like, I was like, oh yeah, skins just like, I said, you did the whole affirmation station at Life Series, like you coming up and doing something like outside of the norm made sense because it's who you are and it's what makes you wonderful. Yeah. But then it was that time I remember being like, <laughs> You just feel like a bit like, so, you know what, like someone doesn't like when you meet someone at like a convention, then you're like, okay, I'm going to go. And they're like, oh, I'll come. And you're like, no, it's not quite what I meant. And it's like, no, I'm going to go. Like, I remember the time because you were like, oh, I'm just looking for a place to live. And I'm like, oh, well, that island's really nice. And yeah. you're like, yeah. And then you just stayed there. And I yeah. was like. Dude, oh, dude, Scott, like, okay, dude, here's the dude, best get part. Out of here. Yeah, here's the best part of that, dude, is that which you don't know, and it it pans out perfectly in my video since I had the timer. I had like 15 seconds left. That's like like 15 to 20 seconds yeah. left, and it's got like the, Skiz. There's a nice little island over here, and I'm all like, maybe if I act like I can't see him, I'm like, oh, where are you? You're like, I'm right behind yeah. you, <laughs> and I'm just like counting down. I'm like, God, seven more seconds. I got to be next to Jeb. Come on! And it like counts down, counts down, and right then I'm like, okay, show me the island, buddy. And you show me. I'm like, yeah. I love it. I'm out of here. <laughs> it was such. I just. It was also just like the start of it, obviously, because also we didn't. None of us knew other than the task you had, like what the scope of the task could right. be. Right. So like. Also, at the time, I was like, this, I didn't know that that would be a task, like stick around someone because it was the very first session. Yeah. So, because I think I can't even remember what my first task was, but it was like a physical thing. Like it was, and I had to attach my house to someone's. So, from my <laughs> brain, I was like, it's why Jem kept moving her block over a bit. And I just, kept, it looked like I was just getting away from impulse. And I was like, no, I'm just, Jem's is a little bit closer to attach to like, <laughs> stop moving. <laughs> and every time, like, and I think so that was where I was like, I didn't, at that point, I didn't realize, like, obviously there was the level of social tasks that would sit in there. So I was like, Impulse is just, I was like, does he want to just join us? But he didn't say that. Like, <laughs> I was just like, okay, sure, bud. <laughs> Uh, Someone come pick up the skins. Yeah, <laughs> Staying around a little bit. The, uh, <laughs> the dynamic of of life series is is really interesting because like uh, we all didn't know each other before yeah. it, it kicked off, and so basically we got to know each other in this game that we had to take on uh, characters and and roles mm -hmm. and, and role play. And basically backstabbing each other sometimes literally. Yep. Um, and and that's how we got to know each other. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's how we we kind of met. And, and it's it's just it's it's an odd environment to be thrown into to meet somebody and then like have to kill them at, at some point in the season. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, when, you just, when you just are getting it's to the know same them. As all my Among Us friends, I'm like, we met through just lying bare to each other, mm, like yep. murdering it and lying straight up. Like that was how we ended up bonding. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, it, I think it's a good example that like you were saying there of the very first season is like when you kind of like take a step back and you look at like the pairs, like we didn't really actually mix much. Mm -hmm. I'd say like the most mixed one was like Ren and Martin, like those two kind of coming together was like a all oh, different thing. Cause all like you hermits, you stuck together. I went with Jimmy in the end, like Joel lived himself. And then like we, me and Jimmy ended up getting closer with Green and Scar, but like we knew Green in person. So it was like, it took a couple seasons, I think, before people started like then mixing and merging. And I think that's where it kind of like took off, I think. Mm -hmm. Third Life was such an iconic one, but I think from Last Life on was when we kind of all realized, oh, we can mesh a bit more and we can interact with each other. And it's like, oh, if we bumped into each other when we were walking somewhere, it wasn't awkward. Mm -hmm. Whereas like, and the very first time you're like, I don't know who they are. I don't know what jokes I can make. Like <laughs> I very quickly like picked up Cleo's humor because it's very similar to mine. I was like, I mean, Cleo are like this. Like I understand what yeah. she, like I'm picking up what she's putting down kind of thing. <laughs> and I think obviously as the series have gone on, it's more and more like, oh great. Like I know that, I said like last season when it was me and you, Impulse, like we hadn't teamed together per se mm. in as years before, but nothing felt, it felt like we had. Like it was like, oh, you've been playing Minecraft for ages. Like, we were just like, I'm going to do this. Here's this thing. Like, it didn't ever feel awkward. And it's now, it's why, one of the things I love about the life series is like, 
it's very rare that the team ups in them are like predetermined. Like I remember for that one, I'd sort of said to Jem, like, oh, if we meet, I'd love to like team up. And I just happened to bump into you and Jem. And I was like, cool. But like every other series, it's like, I just happened to bump into Peril. And we were like, sure, let's go. Or Martin was the only other person without someone. And I didn't have someone. So he came to me like, it's I like that. You just bump into who you do in the wild. And you're like, we're happy. Like, I like you. Yeah. Okay. We'll stay as a team. Great. Yeah, this is us now. That like, happened um, mainly because I had the secret task of making my existence about cherry blossoms. Yeah. And you and Jem were like, we're thinking about basing up on top of the cherry blossom hill. And I was like, okay, here I go. I got to follow my yeah. follow my lead here. And and that was it. And then that was you yeah. know, we we formed Jem and the Scots and yep. and that and that was that was our season. You know that was always such a funny thing. Oh, sorry, you go skills. No, no, go. Please carry on. I was just saying that was always funny with Jem and the Scots, because I remember <laughs> being like Am I allowed to call you Scott? Like I want to make this joke. Because I remember saying to you, like, obviously off camera, I was like I know your name is Scott. Is that public? Can I make a gem in the Scottish joke? And you were like, "Yeah, that's fine." You said it in the podcast. Yep. So I was like, "Okay, cool." Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As soon as um, yeah, we had Mumbo on, and uh, we were getting into I think part two with Mumbo, where uh, you know, <clears throat> and if you got time today, I'd love to get into a part yeah. two um in in a little bit. But uh, we we start to talk about more about the the person as opposed to the creator. Yeah. Right. Because we we do have maybe some difference in personalities, how we present ourselves mm -hmm. on camera and off camera and the things that we do. And um, it felt weird when we had Mumbo on and we were addressing him as Ollie, um, which his yeah. name is his publicly known. Yeah. And, and so, you know, Skiz was like, you know, this feels weird for us to be sitting here going imp and Skiz and calling you by your actual first name. So let's just go ahead and do it. And so, yeah. you know, we said, Andy Scott, okay, nice to meet you. And at that point it was out and you'd mentioned like, Hey, this would be funny because we're both Scots. Yeah. You know? And I was like, yeah, let's go for it. Cause we, and I'm, I am upset that we never made a song together. <laughs> yeah. I think it was one of the things like, I think we kept saying we were going to do it. And I think we all kind of just hoped the one of the other two would like yeah. start it because like the thing is like with content creation, like especially during secret life, like it was just the end coming up to Christmas, like it was my birthday time. I was traveling for Twitch cons. Like everything was so hectic that mm -hmm. I was like, unless someone else like can start the ball rolling, like I don't have time to do that. And I think you were in the exact same situation with like the podcast stuff and then also traveling for Twitch con, same as Jem was mm -hmm. like, we were all ended up like having that, like, cause Jem, I think also at that time would have had empires Two and Hermitcraft. Oh no, she stopped. She had other SMPs. I know she had two, like, and I think it was that sort of thing. Like we were all just like, I'd love to do this. I don't have the time right now. Mm -hmm. Like maybe something we do in the future, mate. There's still, we can still, still like, a chance. I still yeah. have stuff from like third life's last, like flower husbands is still going strong. No matter how much me and Jimmy have tried to kill it. You know, yeah. I, I, I'm loving, I love talking about the life series. I feel like I could talk about it all day because right. there's just so yeah, much to unpack there. And it's, I, I always look at the relationship between um, Skiz and, and, and Smajor on that show and I, I picture a world where uh, imagine like a, a knight in full armor, right? With like the the all like the actual metal armor and the in the mesh and the chain link and all that. And then here comes a little kitten and jumps on his ankle and goes, ah, and tries to chew on the ankle. I'm the kitten and he's the knight. <laughs> and 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 the proof there is what I try I try to attack him and I literally put you in lava to start it. And I, I think I ate a golden apple, put you in lava. And his reaction was to go, oh, oh. And I'm trying to hack him up. He leaves. <laughs> I'm chasing him forever. Impulse is watching this nightmare and actually says, God, this is hard to watch. <laughs> and I'm trying to get it done. Not only does he not lose his cool, but I finally just, I, I give up. And uh, you can see him later. He comes up because you and Martin were living together at that time. Yeah. And all, all Spacer says is, Martin, Skiz tried to kill me. Like, it's like super, yeah. super mellow. Like, he, like at no point did he think that he was in any actual danger. <laughs> this is very My humbling. threat level wasn't going off. My brain was like, this is fine. This yeah. is okay. <laughs> I remember Impulse. I had a moment like that with Impulse, and I think it was Last Life. Where obviously I was the boogie man and I got you down like into the basement but and then like I had you in like in the wall, lava. Oh yeah. And you like ate a god apple or something yep. and it ender out and you got away and I was like, 
how is it how is he done this like <laughs> what like I, I had to have to like chase you all the way to yours like after yeah. being, like push you into a ditch because like you just wouldn't like die and i was he, like he waited. how is he not <laughs> he, he waited until i went back to my base and then basically i was he caught me like monologuing about how uh, yeah. like how amazing that escape was and i i'm too busy you know bragging about my getaway to, to even pay attention to the fact that he's sneaking up behind me and knocks me into a pit which was meant for him i think you know <laughs> it was, yeah it was, that's it was how good. that works well, there was another moment where the whole server i think i think on this last series i believe that scott was the last uh green life or something to that effect i don't remember but the event, was it were you the last? It like, was Impulse, I think. Impulse was the last I one. Was the last. I died. It was like, before. we died just after, yeah. Okay. Because um, it was premeditated, but yeah. There, no, I think I think what you're thinking of is, is, is it the zombie infection bit? Uh, maybe that, yeah, that's that, that may, but the bottom line is the whole server was after you and you went up on this like steeple or something. Like you built, you you stacked <gasps> straight up. I went, oh, this was on Limited Life. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. I went, too, okay. the, I went on top of the frog tower thing because it, it, yeah. it was, yeah, I think it was, <laughs> I was the last green, I think it might have been, it was your tangle, because one of you let Skiz kill you to get the hour back, and then I let yeah. Martin kill me. But yeah, I remember everyone is after me. I'm on this tower, yeah. and then Joel manages to click me with an arrow, and I had like managed to make the bucket clutch on like the side of the hill, and I'm like, oh my god, go! <laughs> well, that's how you start. Okay, so see, so you're like you're so elusive, and I'm so oblivious. But I, I'm the way I edited it is I had this intense music as we're tracking you, and I'm just getting all amped up, and everybody's gone, including you. And the only people left is me and Impulse, and I'm still in like. Like you, you know he's gone, and I'm yeah. still like in like roid rage. I'm like, I gotta, I gotta get a piece, and you're all of what? I'm all, I gotta get. Oh, is he gone? <laughs> <laughs> you had been gone for like twenty yeah. seconds. Yeah, <laughs> it was the same. I, it's one of the things that like I don't know where I got it. I've always been very like I get and there's something so childlike joyous of getting chased in Minecraft. Like I don't know yeah. what it is. Getting chased in Minecraft is like there's a like level of like adrenaline that sets off in me. Yeah. And I've always been really good at like just disappearing. Like I've always been pretty good at like managing to like get under a block or hide away and you're suddenly like, what? Where did he go? And I remember it was during like the zombie like infection thing that Jem did um in Secret Life. And I remember there was one point because like I was Pushing my limits of what I'd said earlier, where I was like, I just wandered up to the group of all the zombie people. I was like, hi, guys. Like, what are you doing? And then everyone was sort of was like, okay, never going to kill you. And I was like, I need to go quickly. Like, I, I need to go. And I managed to get away from that. And it, like, it was, again, a zombie thing. I think it was only me, Cleo, and Green that survived. And there's one clip from my POV where, like, I'm running near Lizzie's. And then I see Joel come. And I'm like, I don't have a shovel in my hot bar. And I'm like, crap. Like, I dig down. I'm underwater with Pearl and Joel like five blocks behind me. I'm just seeing the bubbles go down and I'm like, I need to get out. But also they're right behind me. And I like, I managed to get up and get away. None of them seen me. Wow. And like, it's one of my favorite moments of like me being like this close to them being like, no, never mind. It's fine. You don't see anything. <laughs> I'm just going to go this way. Elusive, man. It's how I like, I don't know how much you both know about like Empire stuff, but like back in season one, we had this like, whole storyline with like a demon called Zornoth and it only ended up happening because I one time decided this is when Proxmod was like quite new so it, like Proxmod changed Minecraft SMPs mm -hmm. but at the time I remember I was going and like messing with Shovel by like shooting her and then digging underground or then like hiding and just like whispering through my microphone and all this sort of stuff and then I remember messaging Fwip at the time and I was like can I get like an opt other account that has nothing to do with me just to mess with people, like with Shelby and this sort of thing. And I just picked like a skin, it was just fully like black. So it just looked like this, like the silhouette. Chose like, I remember just going to Google, just going like demon name generator and taking Zarnoth. I was like, that username exists, sure. <laughs> and from that was where like that whole thing happened. It was just for me liking to be sneaky in Minecraft and mess with people turned into this whole storyline thing that ended up. I That's also when I discovered that even through a voice filter mod, you can still tell that I'm Scottish. I also discovered even when I breathe, I sound Scottish. Because I tried doing like the Phasmo thing of just going like, <sighs> into like the mics. <laughs> turns out you can still tell it was me. Like, turns <laughs> out my breathing even has a Scottish accent. Like, it does. It actually does. Yeah. That was a very Scottish exhale. <laughs> yeah, I was like, great. That doesn't help blend uh, into the shadows here. Oh, man. 
Well, I, I think um, we're at a good point now to uh, to cut this uh, this mm-hmm. part, and we'll get into more about Scott and and his yeah. Scottish accent, and also <laughs> uh, yeah, transplanting from one country to another. I'd love to talk about that. Uh, we had yeah. we recently had Ren on, who came from South Africa, and talked a little bit about um, being an immigrant and, and, and things like that. So I'd like to hear more from you about what that journey's been mm-hmm. like, and uh, just get to know you maybe even outside the content creation world a little bit. Um, but I do also want to talk about empires a little bit more too and the role mm-hmm. playing and stuff like that. Cause yeah. I got a chance yeah. to, I got a chance to see it firsthand when we, had the, yeah. when we had the rift. So um, we can still talk about that next, uh, next part as well. But yeah, let's wrap things up yeah, on good. this one. Yeah. So, all right. Good. Thanks. We'll see you in a bit. Yeah. See you in a bit. <laughs>